Is it? Awesome. Um, Stephen, first of all, just if you can bring us up to date in terms of injuries, if any, any squad news we were aware of, the, the players who've been called up. Um, yeah, Ender Stevens and you know, Ender Stevens has has been ruled out, and Will Kane have been ruled out. So th those two players have been ruled out. And the players you've uh, you've called up, can you talk to us about them? Yeah, sure. Just um, obviously, uh, Sinclair Armstrong's come in. He's had he's played for QPR in the championship this year consistently. Um, his rise has been quite meteoric because, um, you know, we probably wouldn't have anticipated him moving so quickly into the first team. But obviously, with Evan Ferguson and Michael Obafemi, they they were mainly sort of some of the strikers would try Paris for building the team around Callum Robinson. So it's an opportunity for for Sinclair because he's he's performed very well with QPR, and has uh, attributes that. We can certainly use, you know. We can certainly after he says, you know, obviously because he, you know, I think he's he's done very well at championship level. <coughs> Jonathan, on the other hand, has been. Um, I was at the European Championships a few years ago in the nineteens when he was, well, the third best player in the European Championships, and um, he was in the team at the championships and subsequently played under twenty one level. Got his, everyone wanted to sign him. Then he chose to go to Celtic. It didn't work out, but he's. Rejuvenated himself at Bohemians and been very, very impressive this year. And uh, so Jonathan comes into the squad off. And do you see a possibility of them getting game time? I mean, to, to go from outside of the squad to. to yeah, well, obviously, it? needs must. And obviously, we have a situation where we have five strikers injured. So it's <coughs> it's certainly, uh, that, is, as, that is a possibility for sure. And can I ask you the importance of the crowd? You're, you're looking for a special result and you're looking for a, a special night. And you've mentioned before how important it has been. That the crowd has been behind you and your team. How important will it be against the Netherlands? Yeah, <clears throat> it's a great game. Sunday night in Dublin in the Aviva Stadium. Um, the anticipation to sell out for a long time, and it's uh, people are, you know, excited about the game. It's, it has a real edge to it, and um, Holland obviously have a great tradition. Um, you know, they've had a lot of great teams and. Um, this Dutch team obviously had a strong World Cup and, and lost, <clears throat> you know, to um, penalties to Argentina. But they um, they obviously didn't still got to the semi-finals of the Nations League as well, but didn't start so well. But sat, the weekend was their best performance against Greece, and they changed things around tactically and um, they played very well. So it's a, it's a very very tough challenge ahead against Holland. But one that we're happy to embrace and take on, and and uh, we're excited by the game. Damien Sparman, please. Stephen, the Ireland team that beat the Netherlands back in 2001, containing that sort of golden, golden generation of Ireland players. You've got a lot of young players in your team. Would a similar, where would a similar result against the Netherlands this time ranking Irish football history? Yeah, well, we're not comparing ourselves to the team of 2001 because they had some of the best players that ever played for Ireland. And we're, we're not trying to compare ourselves to, to them, but I think um, uh, you know I think we're an emerging team, and I think we <laughs> we've shown a capacity to raise a game in the in the in front of our own support, passionate support, and um, so and we put in some very good performances at home there. So it's it's a game that. Um, will challenge us. Holland have uh, players, that, you know, of the highest highest caliber. You know, the players with the with the top clubs. But we've gone toe to toe with some of the best teams, and um, we must raise a game and get get our best victory yet. That's what we would have to do. We'd have to raise a game, get our, our best our best victory yet as a team, and that's the challenge for us. And we need the supporters to help us do that. We need that energy in the ground and we need that level, that high octane support to be really passionate and, and get behind the team and give the players energy after, after you know, a real, the, all, their, all their physical stats are very high in Paris um, after a real, in, in the heat, you know, a tough, a tough game. So to go again, we'll need, we'll need everyone to really, uh, to fire. 
shame you played on big nights for Ireland and Gaul, particularly the Italy game, yeah. the Euros. Do you have to kind of summon up the spirit of that in the Germany game and, and games like that going into a game like this? Oh, we know it's a huge game and something we have to all thrive off and I'm making our special night, so it's more memories we can create and I think personally the game's still memories that I talk about to my children, big nights for, for your country and it's another chance for us now to, to make it another special night at the Viva and make more memories. Ed Leahy? Stephen, we all know it's a big night for a collective performance of together with Sultan on Sunday night. Um, would you also agree that it's important and vital that the individuals in the team, the Mavericks, those willing to take your game plan and really push it to the limits, perhaps uh, step up and be brave in, in, in this game? Um, well, Mavericks, you know, <laughs> you know, you know it's, uh, I, I see the point you're making, maybe are creative flares, is, is that the point you make? Creative flares, but... The, yeah, yeah, no, listen, uh, Holland press, you know, they press higher than any, and more aggressively than any team we've played, probably. You know, as, as, as well, as much as any team we've played. They, they, they're a very high pressing team, they press very aggressively, they commit a lot of players to the press, they can commit six or seven to the press at any time. Uh, and they've got speed. They do that. They they go they go as a unit, and uh, so yeah, we'll have to be we'll have to be uh, um, pass accurately and sharp and be brave in possession for sure. And um, we have speed in our in our attack also, so we have to utilise that. And just a quick one: on shots from outside the box and yeah. goals. Um, I tend to agree with you that it's everything is on individual merit. So just. But at the same time, it's an effective practice. And um, you think your own team should maybe be implying that a bit more? I know Michael would be queen, could have a shot that could be all, but would you encourage that a bit more, maybe? Yeah, and uh, I, um, and we've got to, you know, we've got to stop, stop, you know, we did, I mean, the players effectively have stopped a lot of shots, but we've got to stop, you know, as many shots as we can. We've got to get our bodies and put our bodies on the line and, and stop shots from outside the box and make sure we do that, you know? And that's 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 very important also. Okay. Stephen, um, you'll obviously be looking for a good performance tomorrow night. You've had good performances against the likes of France and maybe not been rewarded, but it, it is all about results for you tomorrow night um, to keep the qualification hopes alive. Does that change anything at all in your in your side? Yeah, listen, it's 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 a different game tactically to France and uh, France are the best team in the world, you know, the, in my opinion. I think they are, the, you know, the, the incredible team and, you know, an emerging team that's got better even from the World Cup, I think, uh, the way. But I feel that uh, Holland have a lot of good individual, individual players and they're formulating the team now and they played well against, uh, that's their best performance against Greece. Greece are a good team and they, they emphatically beat Greece three anything up at half time and they won comfortably. Um, so we're going to have to put in the performance of our lives and we're, we're determined to try and do that. And that's, you know, I think uh, for sure we need goals in the team and that's, that's what we need. And we need, but we need to, we need to match Holland right throughout, you know, right throughout. And we need to be aggressive in our, in our approach also um, uh, in this game and, uh, and be, be, be composed in the, in the cauldron of, of the Aviva because, it, you know, we need to be composed under pressure. And just, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about that win in 2001 in the Netherlands, but signature wins have been really important for Ireland to qualify. The likes of that win, the one against Germany, this is a chance against a team that, you know, there'll be a lot of eyes, sold at stadium, as, as, as you mentioned, but a lot of eyes on this game tomorrow because it's such a big, high-profile team that's coming to play in the game. Yeah, it is, and, and uh, you know, we, we, know, we, we know that we, uh, a victory is important for us, you know, we know how important it is, and... So it's that's that's where it is, and where you know we we'll prepare well as as well as we can after just coming back on Thursday night. Make sure we're ready. The players are clear of how we're going to play, and um, you know I think we'll have to we, we'll certainly be tested against this team, and we'll have to match them, and we're capable of doing that. We're absolutely capable of doing that, 
and we have to show the belief and conviction to, to, to try and get the, get the win that we, we need. Okay, we're moving to the embargo section now, so all, questions, all um, answers are embargoed to 11pm tonight. We've got a lot of people to get around, so if you can just restrict to two questions each, even one in time to David. Shane Carey, just uh, some more data over the last few days of being back with you. Yeah, enjoyable, of course. It's been it's been a while, so really excited when I first for, first came in, and and obviously the game the other night was um it didn't go our way, of course, but um, it was still a special feeling and um, being back out there, jersey back on, and um, and trying to get the win for the country. That was it was just it's been a it's been an enjoyable week, and it's been good to see all the lads again going back, and um, just excited for tomorrow. Now. Yeah, of course it always is. Like even I've never took a cap for granted in my life, and uh, sometimes you you don't know when your last one is. So um, it's and it's it's always a privilege to to get called up for your country, and um, every time it's it's a special feeling. So um, of course I missed it. It was. It's quite tough watching when, when you've been a part of it for so long. So um, I was just happy to get my personal life, my football life back in, in order and um, to get back playing, being happy, a big smile on my face again. And, and I feel good and I feel fit, so uh, I'm happy where I'm at. Difficult, yeah, of course, difficult. Um, well, I've had difficult moments in my life and I've dealt with them, so... Um, I'm a strong character. I can come back from things, and and I keep coming, keep coming back. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm in a good place. All the help, please. Shane, what are the conversations with Stephen like when when Stephen has to tell you he's leaving you out of the squad due to not playing? It's very obvious. I wasn't playing every week, and um, I, I haven't played a lot of football for nearly eighteen months. I'd say like consistent football, and I'm not stupid like. I'm, I want the best version of Shane for the manager to, to pick and and he wasn't getting that so I was I was on the bench a lot, I wasn't playing regular football and and someone my size, the way I play, I need regular constant football to, to get the best version of me and, and that, that's where I was and we both spoke and we're men and we talk about it and, and we want the best for our country, we want the best to win the next games and, and that's where we're both at and, and at the time the best players and, and that's where we're at. When, when you went to Fulham, did you, did you think things, when you went there first, did you think things were going to turn? Yeah. I was really excited with the move. I thought it was a great chance to go to stay in the Premier League, a good club and a really good manager. And I went in there and, and we got off to a really good start and the back four was really settled. We I think we had one of the best, the best seasons Fulham's history for a while, so um, it was very difficult. But I did really enjoy my time there. I know I weren't playing, and it's it's a stupid sort of thing to say because I weren't playing. But it was a really good time for me with the team, and the manager was great with me. And it was just the, pl the players in front of me. It, it happened to be they were, they were having the seasons of their life, and I felt like I played a big part in the change room in the group, helping helping the team in that way. So. Um, it was difficult, but um, it's another thing. Where, um, I really enjoyed my time, but it obviously affected me playing wise. But I'm, I'm past that now. Neil, are you in this? Hi, Shane. Um, I'm sure you're tight in your own ability to get back, but obviously the form of other players is something you can't control. Yeah. So, was there a concern you mightn't get back in when there are so many of your players are young of age and kind of kicking on in their careers? Well, you always believe in yourself, of course, but um, I know I know myself when when I'm playing week in week out, the what I can offer, and that's I was just taking that step by step of getting back to that level. And personally, now I feel the fittest I've been. Games are getting better the more I'm playing again, and um, of course we've got really good in my position. We've got really good centre backs here from the country and, and young ones as well. So. Um, it's something I'm really happy about because it's good for our country, it's good for us for the future and I want to help them, of course. So um, I never doubt myself when I'm playing every week and, and that's that's just my mentality of going forward. Steve, if I could just ask you, um, you mentioned about 
Holland have been their best performance. Uh, what's the biggest factor in the 4 0 to France, the 3 0 to Greece? Is it the opposition, uh, the personnel Holland had, or the tactical changes you made? And could you expand on those tactical changes? The tactical changes Holland made? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, they played a 4 3 3, obviously, and uh, you know, they obviously used the Man City model, if you like, where it is. It, it, that sort of new, new development of like Guardiola brought in, really, with it, in relation to centre backs becoming midfield players, and then you're building a three, and, and you know, you play like that. But that was how they were playing for a while. And they, you know, they were they're back to a traditional 3 4 2 1 different uh, styles. So they're, they're good in both. Obviously, they've got good players who can adapt, and they've got a lot of good players. So it's, uh, it's, um, you know, they're obviously going to be a formidable team to play against. But that's the challenge, and we're we're, we're absolutely ready for that. Damn it, Donald. Uh, Stephen, you mentioned the <coughs> physical impact in terms of the game. Did that leave you making decisions late? Like, like, can you, do you have an assessment of where everyone is, or are you waiting on any players that may not have injury, but you're seeing how they are? I'm just wondering. Yeah, no, it is. You know, obviously, Damien Doyle had a fitness, you know, meetings with him in relation to the overall stats. You know, the stats were extremely high. The physical output was extremely high, and that was that was um, that's something certainly to consider. But to be honest, there's no late calls. I'm very clear about what I want. I'm very clear about the team that be selected. Um, and um, cleared in my mind so there's nothing there's no grey areas in relation to selection everyone is uh, there's no one on the borderline of whether they actually can play or not you know so it's it's pretty clear now to, to me and to the players and we're getting ready for it sorry Johnny you didn't come through with okay then just doubt yeah yeah he did he did come through with okay yeah he did come through with okay but uh, it's a quick recovery for him obviously and uh yeah, no, he's okay. A couple of minutes left, so Philip and then Paul. Philip? Um, yeah, Stephen, um, you said to us in June that you would be judged by this campaign. Um, now, according to where we are at the moment, people that do the data on these things, we have a 1% chance of qualifying for the top two finish. So, uh, how should people judge that? Well, I think, I think for us, uh, we're playing Holland tomorrow night, and... Uh, the reality is that we've spoken already. It's a tough challenge, and uh, they're, they're, they're you know a very an exceptional team. But if we can get the win that we so desire, we desire so you know we have great great desire to get the the victory that we need tomorrow night. And if we do, it gives us it gives us an opportunity in the October window to build on that, and it keeps us st still very much in contention. And and that's you know so that's certainly uh, that's that, that's the way we're viewing it at the moment. What gives us an idea of what player we get to do? Top player, you know, um, Forest have got a really good player on their hands. Obviously, sad they lose him at Norwich. Would have made our squad better, but um, it's in two clubs decided, thing. and um, I'm delighted for him, and he's gone on to be a, a, a big future. And did um, you know? I think in November you said uh, you, you you didn't play perhaps because of personal reasons. Did Personal. Paul, oh, thank you. Cheers. John, just one more. You know, Stephen, you referred to it there as an emerging team. Um, but I remember when we spoke to you think, two years ago after the end with Jenna game, you said that this was a campaign that you were targeting in terms of us being really, really competitive. If we've got three points at that midway stage, do you think we're on track for that prediction? Well, we, we're focused on the game tomorrow. Obviously, we played France twice, we're the best team in the world. You know, so we, we you know, certainly we, uh, we, I think everyone knows it was a tough group. Absolutely, it's the ambition to qualify. That has been the ambition. We're building a team to qualify in this, in this campaign. I'm not not going to deny that. That's that was absolutely the ambition. So you know, we we're looking to try and get a victory that we need tomorrow night, um, and we have to work extremely hard to get that. And we we'll need, you know, we we we'll need to absolutely put in the performance of our lives. And we need things to go away, and, and that's it's, it's one of those nights that we need to make it happen for ourselves. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Training starts in.